Good morning, everyone. It's Mrs. Regler, and it's time for our Number Corner Friday. We're going to fly by this date part because you guys are getting to be experts. Go ahead and read the date out loud as I pick each part up. Oops. Make sure to add the comma where it belongs. Then you'll write the short date, turning April 17, 2020, into all numbers. Remember to use your Jack Hartman song if you need help turning the month into a number. Now I'm going to share a bit of a funny story with you. If you look closely, this is what you can see from outside my door. There are lots of trucks cutting down trees this morning, so there are lots of beeps and buzzes. I'm going to try to keep them out of the video as best I can, but if you hear crazy beeps and buzzes, they are coming from these big trucks that are cutting down trees in my neighborhood. I'm sorry if you hear those on our video today. Let's go ahead and look at April 17th on the calendar. Can you find the number 17? Right there. What day of the week is it today? If you said Friday, nice job. What day will it be tomorrow? Tomorrow will be Saturday. It's a weekend day, so no school. If today is Friday, what was yesterday? If you said Thursday, nice job. Today is Friday, yesterday was Thursday, and tomorrow will be Saturday. Now let's look at our calendar pieces for the month of April. You guys have been doing a really good job of making predictions about your calendar pieces. Remember that our calendar pieces are going to show us one of four words. Length, weight, capacity, or temperature. Go ahead and look at the pieces from our calendar before to figure out our pattern. Then you can make a prediction. Go ahead and write that prediction down. Let's see if you're correct. If you said length, nice job. Today, April 17th, is showing us length. Today they are measuring a pencil. They're using a ruler to measure. How long is the pencil? If you said eight, nice job. It is eight inches long. Now let's go ahead and look at how many days we've been in school, including our digital learning days. Today our number is, did you say 137? If you did, nice job. Remember we don't have room to show our first 100, so go ahead and put the first 100 in your brain. 10 10 frames that are full make 100. Yesterday we counted by fives, but today we're going to go back to counting by tens. Go ahead and put 100 in your head. Now let's keep counting. 110, 120, 130, and then we stop because this is not a full set of 10. So now we have to count by ones. 131, 132, 133, 134, 135, 136. But our number is 137. So we need to add how many dots? Just one. Now we have 137. Next, let's look at 137 on our chain with links. Remember that for our chain with links, we're only representing the number in the ones place. 137 has three digits, here, here, and here. Do you remember which one of those is the ones place? 
Let's see if you remembered. This is the 100s place. This is the 10s place. So 7 is in the 1s place. If you remembered that all by yourself, nice job. Since 7 is in the 1s place, we need to have 7 chains. How many chains do we have right now? Six, which means we need to add one more. What color chain are we going to add today? Blue. Let's go ahead and write a number sentence to match our chains. We have five red plus two blue equals seven. We're showing seven from our number 137. Now let's look at 137 on a number line. Remember that our odd numbers that end in 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 are red, and our even numbers that end in 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8 are green. Look carefully at 137. Is that an even number or an odd number? Go ahead and write down what you think. If you guessed odd, nice job. 137 is an odd number because it ends in seven. Now you're going to practice counting your numbers from 130 to 137. Go ahead and count them out loud as I move each one for you. Nice job. Now let's look at our frog and toad graph. Today I'm going to spin the spinner and show you what I land on. Today it looks like it's a toad day, so we're going to color a toad. Remember our toad pieces are brown. There we go. Now that I've colored for today, how many does toad have? If you said five, nice job. How many does frog have? Seven, very good. So which one has the most, frog or toad? Frog. That means toad has the least. Now let's look at your than question. Here's our word than. When we use the word than, that means we are comparing things. And I'm going to ask you to compare frog to toad. How many more pieces does frog have than toad? Here's that sentence frame you're going to use. Frog has hmm more than toad. And you will fill in the blank. You guys have been doing a very good job of this, so I can't wait to see your answers again today. Now let's use the information from our graph to fill in our number sentence on our recording sheet. Yesterday, we had seven plus four equals 11. Today, how many frogs do we have? Still seven. How many toads do we have? Five. Since our numbers are getting bigger than just answering to 10, there's a couple different strategies you can use. You can put seven in your head and then count five fingers. You could use a 10 frame, drawing circles, drawing lines, or you might be able to notice a pattern. If seven plus four equals 11, then what is seven plus five? 
If you said 12, nice job. 7 plus 5 equals 12. Our 7s stayed the same. And our toads only changed by one number. 5 is one more than 4. So if 7 plus 4 is 11, then 7 plus 5 must be 12. We'll figure out a new number sentence when we start our number corner again next week. Now let's look at the last part of our number corner, which is our word problem challenge. I'll go ahead and read it to you. Mrs. Wiggler had five markers. Savannah gave her some more markers. Now Mrs. Wiggler has seven markers. How many markers did Savannah give to Mrs. Wiggler? We've been practicing this kind of word problem all week. It is a bit tricky, but there's a clue word in there to help us know that this is a different kind of word problem. It's that word, some. Do you see it in the word problem? It's right there. That some means that some part of our number sentence is missing, so we have to figure out which part. We also know it's addition because it says gave and more. That's how we know it's going to be an addition number sentence. Today, I'm not going to give you the number sentence. I'm going to help you, but hopefully you can put it together by yourself. Let's read the number, let's read the word problem again and see if you can figure out your number sentence. Mrs. Wiggler had five markers. That means your number sentence will start with five. Savannah gave her some more. That means the middle of your number sentence should be represented with a blank line. We don't know how much some is. Now, Mrs. Wiggler has seven markers. That means you're going to have seven at the end of your number sentence. How many markers did Savannah give to Mrs. Wiggler? See if you can set up the number sentence and figure out how many markers Savannah gave to me. I can't wait to see your drawings and see what strategies you use to figure this out. Good luck and happy Friday!